Hey, in this video, uh, let's see what it would take to create a low poly uh, mask here in Maya that is similar to something like what Zenyatta has. So um, I don't know how many of you guys play Overwatch, but there's a character in there called Zenyatta. And uh, this is what he looks like. So instead of building the entire character, I just wanted to see as an exercise what it would take to create just the mask and specifically not so much the shape of the mask. I'm really just interested to see how would we pull off creating kind of a nine holes and maybe the eye sockets uh, here in Maya. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what, um, what would be some of the techniques we could use for something like this. So I think the best way is to grab a box. I'm going to start with a box. And if we go into our channel box, we can uh, make sure that the Z value is a zero and the X value is a zero. Uh, make sure it's centered. And now let's go ahead and go to mesh and do something like smooth. All right. And I really uh, would like to see if we can attempt to keep this as low poly as possible, just as an exercise. So maybe this is a little too low, but maybe let's go ahead and bump our, uh, our divisions to three and take a look. Now to make sure that we see our topology, I'm gonna turn on this button here, wireframe unshaded. And um, now what I would like to do is let's, talk about some of the options for uh, creating maybe nine holes like in this area here, right? So obviously one of the options is to grab a um, cylinder and just do a Boolean, right? Just punch the hole right through. But if we do that, then we're going to end up with some really funky topology because if we just punch holes uh, inside other polygons, then we have to turn them into triangles and it's just going to look uh, kind of messy. So maybe in one way we could do something like this is um, let's grab maybe the nine points where we want the holes to be. So something like that. And one of the options we could use is we could go to uh, go to edit mesh and click on this um, button here called chamfer chamfer verts, right? So I'm going to click on that. And that you could see gave us um, kind of a nine shapes that now we can maybe turn into more of a kind of a round spherical shape or a round circle instead of uh, like a diamond. All right, so now we have something like this, essentially nine diamonds. So another thing we could do is we can select one face we can do them on uh, nine at once, but we could just do one at a time. Let's select one and click on this button here called uh, circularize. So I'm going to click on that. And at first nothing happened, but now if I go to add divisions and maybe add a couple divisions, um, I'm just going to do one. You can see that now uh, it turned into more of a circle instead of a diamond. And that's what I'm looking for. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, select another one, press G to repeat my last command and just kind of go around and do the same thing for uh, the others. And the reason I can't do them all at once is because then it's going to try to uh, group them and make a circle out of the group instead of the individual uh, circle, right? So that's, I don't want that result. So I'm doing this individually. And now since I have this, right, I can of course punch the hole right through. But um, one obvious thing that we have to um, realize is if we if we do this, let's try to do this. If we just simply press delete, and we are left with something like this. Um, it looks nice. But if this is a low poly game asset, right game model, um, we have a problem because now some of our polygons have a lot of different faces. Now, one thing we could do is we could go to mesh and go to cleanup, maybe go to options. And if I reset my settings, if I leave the cleanup matching polygons on and just do um, 
fixed by tessellation, faces with more than four sides, right? And then say cleanup, you can see that Maya attempts to do its best to kind of give us a clean uh, result. But it still looks uh, kind of messy and not very uh, appealing. I wonder if we can do something better and maybe look make make it uh, a little more um, appealing as far as the topology flow, right? So let's go ahead and undo this. And while we're doing this, one other thing that I would want to do is maybe uh, let's address the eyes as well. They, so let's select uh, both of these and now let's go ahead and click on Devil. And once we've done that, um, we can change maybe the uh, fraction or the height, right? Okay. And now uh, if we wanted this part to be round, kind of like this reference here, uh, one thing we could do is maybe grab these points here and just go to uh, Edit Mesh and do Chamfer one more time. And now what that did is it gave us kind of a rounded edge of these guys, right? So maybe we can grab these points on both sides and let's go ahead and grab our scale tool and just move it up and create more of a round uh, look, right? Now, of course, we can grab these faces here and um, if we wanted to, we can make them a little skinnier. We can also um, maybe try to rotate them. Let's rotate them. All right, so now let's go ahead and just select one of these guys. I'm gonna select all of these uh, faces here and let's just simply uh, rotate it um, but once I rotate it, I'm going to hold on the J key and snap it 15 degrees. So maybe it's um, slanted about 15 degrees. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I'm going to grab this guy, grab my rotation tool, hold on the J key and just rotate it. And now what I would like to do is just simply go in and just delete these faces here. So let's go ahead and delete all of these. And um, you can see how we're getting pretty close to what um, is going on there, right? The uh, only difference is, for example, if this was a mask, maybe another thing we could do is delete, you know, we don't need maybe all of these guys here. So make it more of a mask. Now, I'm not actually building the entire mask, but I just wanna kind of have uh, a technique of what it would take to uh, to build a mask like this. If we wanted to make a cut like this in, in, the, in here, we could grab our knife tool and maybe make a cut from like here to here and then do the same and then press enter. And let's go ahead and do the same thing on this side. Just make maybe a, a cut here. And now uh, we can of course select all of these faces inside. something like this, press delete key, and you can start uh, seeing how, um, you know, we can begin to sort of shape the mask of what we uh, want. Um, so in this case, I'm not going to build the whole mask. I'm just really focusing again, just on this part here. And my uh, concern now is what is the best way to um, turn this into a more uh, appealing topology, right? So maybe one of the ways we could do it is we can manually grab our knife tool and connect some of the faces and kind of use our own common sense to make sure that the faces that we do cut end up being, you know, uh, quads or or maybe well-placed uh, triangles. So for example, if I just do something like this, I can see that this face, for example, has four corners and this does too. So that, that totally works. And I believe maybe this would be the best uh, way to achieve really clean, low poly, uh, 
frame is just to manually um, create your cuts. And um, once once you uh, gone through and created your um, once you cut your topology, right? And you wanted to make sure that hey, I'm not sure if I got all of them. Let's just let's just do a couple more real quick. All right. So once once you uh, went through and uh, did this, there's a couple things I want to uh, point out. One, you can only you only really need to do it on half of the model, right? So, for example, you could just delete this whole half and just work on this um, side only. And for you know, I, I I could clearly see that I haven't done these up here. And um, now before you flip it, what I was going to say is you can always select the whole shape and go to mesh and use cleanup, but use it in a different way. Instead of using the operation cleanup, just say select matching polygons. And instead of having the Maya do the cuts for you, if you say select matching polygons, it's just going to simply show you which ones are not quads, right? So now if I say cleanup, I can see that uh, all of these polygons here still need work, right? So uh, let's quickly address this. So for example, this is one of them. And you have to be careful uh, when you're using the cut tool, you really want to make sure that you click on the points. And uh, this was the other one. All right, and then we can, of course, check it again. Let's go to Mesh, do a cleanup. And uh, now there's a few more. So I'm going to grab this guy. Let's make a cut. And the reason uh, I'm doing it manually is because you can really decide of how and where you want the topology to flow, right? Let's do a cleanup. And now uh, I'm just left with this section here. So I'm going to grab my cut tool and let's go ahead and fix this as well. All right, one more time, mesh cleanup. So you can see the cleanup didn't show me any uh, problems whatsoever. All right, so now we just have to simply flip this over. So we can uh, also go to edit, delete by type history, clear our history. And another thing we could do is just press control D and then go into the channel box here and on the X, just do a minus one. So that's a clever way to just flip our shape over, right? Now what we could do is we can select both of them and combine them. So they're, they're one. And next we can select the inside points and make sure that they are welded. So we can go to mesh, I'm sorry, edit mesh and merge, go to options and let's do a uh, merge. And now um, these are merged together. And if you wanted to double check, you can always select each point individually and just make sure that it says one. You can see that says one, right? Just to uh, be, just triple check. And this topology looks really nice and clean. And of course, now if we wanted to, we can grab the whole entire shape. We can grab all of these points here. I mean, polygons and ju just do an extrude and give us maybe a little thickness. So that that's uh, that's really cool. And if we wanted to get rid of, you know, I could see there's a sharp corner here. We can select the shape and go to M, uh, mesh display and we can do a set to face. And then let's do a um, soft and hard edges. And that kind of gets rid of that sharp line that was there. 
All right. If you turn off your wireframe, you can see how uh, nice and clean this looks. And of course, if you press three, you can see that uh, this is what it would look like if it was if it was smoothed out. Now, if you're not going to smooth it out because this is again a game asset, um, we can add even more detail here on these um, holes, right? So, for example, let's go ahead and select all of this here. Just really quickly, let's select all of these and just maybe add just a little more detail to them. So instead of just simple holes, maybe we can do, let's do these as well. Why not? Um, I'm going to press extrude and let's move this out of the way. I'm going to click on, um, I'm going to click on my blue arrow here and just pull this in a little more, just a little bit. And now what that did is it created this really cool border, right? So now we can use this border to add more detail. So let's gr grab all these borders around the holes. Just like that. I'm going to do it around the eyes too. And now I'm going to do another extrude and just slightly pull this up just a little bit. And I think that uh, creates a really cool uh, look like it's it's more integrated into the mask instead of I'm not sure if this has it. You know, another thing you could do if you didn't want to go out like this, of course, we can add a bevel. So this is one of the options. Let's do control Z. And instead of doing a, a border like that, Another thing we could do is just grab, um, let's go ahead and undo everything. I, I want to go back to the beginning. So instead of doing that, we maybe we can select just the uh, edges. I'm just going to double click on the edges of all nine holes. And you just have to be careful to make sure that all of them are selected because we um, we flip this over, some of the uh, sides might not be selecting by just double clicking. So just make sure that um, they are uh, selected, right? I think I got all of them on my end. And let's do the same thing around the eyes. Let's try it again, a bevel. And that uh, creates another interesting effect that's completely different. So there's a couple different options. And I, to be honest with you, I kind of like this one even more. So, all right, so that's uh, one way of doing it. And of course, if you are done, uh, you can always go to mesh and do a um, let's do another cleanup and we'll just do select matching polygons and make sure we don't have any topology that's funky so we'll do cleanup and we can see that Maya is going to show us if anything is weird so um, because we beveled the eyes it created a polygon with one two three four five uh, points so of course we can fix that by just making another cut. And that's just really good practice to uh, make sure to check your geometry and make sure that it's uh, perfect. All right, so that's um, one way of doing it. And I think that's probably a cool way if this is a game model because as you can see right now this mask is only 600 uh, polygons only 1100 tries so it's very clean and uh, efficient right so all right so thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video